See, initially I was thinking that I will keep this thing very detailed about design system, but later on I decided I will create a separate course for design system in which I will break down every single component, like from start to finish, how you should, how you should build a component, how you should set up the basic color palette typography, and how you should document your design system and how you should hand off the design system to your developer. Okay. So I have just told you some basic key points in this video, like you, how you should build a design system. This is not a detailed video. I will create a separate course for detailed video. Okay. Welcome to the day six of seven day Figma design course. And today we are covering how to build a design system inside figma okay and to understand the system or to understand how design systems work you should know the theory part of the ui design like you should know the basics of ui design and you should also know all features of figma and i have covered all these things in my free design course like this is the theory part this is the tool part in this i have covered the theory part of ui ux design like the basics of ui ux design and this course is available in both hindi and english language so you can watch it in any language you understand okay like this is the hindi version this is the english version and this playlist covers the tool part of design like figma is a tool part this is a theory part okay so to understand this video or to build a design system you should know about both the things okay now let's start and yeah i'm not going to show you how design system works how what are design system i have already covered that thing in the theory video you can go watch that link is in the description and in the i button I will show you the structure of like how you should set up design system inside Figma and what is the correct way of building a component when you're building a design system. Okay. First of all, let me show you some example. Like this is the ADS design system or Atlassian design system. You can copy this design system from Figma community and link is also in the description. Okay. So if you just look at the file structure, if you just look at the page structure, they have like, first of all, they have the cover, then they have channel log, then they have tokens. Like these are the design tokens. They have like, these are the different colors they are using and I have already covered design documents in the last video. So if you don't know that, go watch that you will understand. Okay. So here they are describing the usage and behavior of a color in different say like this is the color text like this is the token name and this is used for primary text such as body copy or sentence case heading or buttons. Okay. And this is the variant like this is a light mode color. This is a dark mode colors. Okay. So these are the things we do in design system like this is called the documentation of design system. So any new designer or developer working with that this design system will they will be able to understand everything by just reading at the documentation. Okay, so they don't need to communicate with you directly every single time they need to learn something new. Okay, so that's why we do the documentation thing. Okay, and then we have the foundations. Okay, like this is the grids. These are a typography and actually they don't have much in the, their design system. Let me show you another example like this is a base. Here we have another design system released by Uber. They use this design system in their UI design. Okay, so like if you go inside the base component, like they have set up every single thing there. Like this is the foundations. This is the core component. These are the forms they have. Then they have overlays. Okay, so they have organized every single thing in single page. You can separate them in different pages like the Atlassian did or the Android design system does that like they have this general like they have buttons, floating buttons, icon. They have everything on separate page. Okay, so you can do the same thing or you can keep everything in same file that doesn't matter but, but it should be well organized like they have done this thing like this is the, these are the foundations like the here we have the base colors like the primitive colors then we have the core colors then we have the semantic color like like these are the ui design tokens they have okay and i have already covered tokens in last video okay you can explore these design systems on your own that's not that much hard i will leave the link for these design system in the description and you can also just go to figma community and search for design system like here we have option called design system and you can, and you can explore different design systems available out there okay now let me show you how to start with building a design system inside Figma. So first, so first of all, you have to go to the teams and you have to create a new project like this, create a new project. Uh, first of all, you have to give a name, let's say one. Okay. Like this is the name of the project. You have to give the name according to the project, like the, your app or website name. Let's say your app name is uh, Zomato. So you have to give the name Zomato. Okay. So create a project. And once your project is created, you have to create two files. First one is for the UI. Second one is for the design system. Let's create a new design file. And I will name this thing. Let's say app name you have to type the app name here dash ui okay and you can also add the version like let's say this is the version one or version two okay so you can add the version name after that okay for now i'm deleting this thing i will create another file inside the project like here we have the project file create a design system and i will name this thing app name dash design system okay and you can also add a version in future like when you will build the second version of this design system okay for now i'm leaving this thing empty okay so now i will set up the page structure like go here and i will simply double click and i will type first of all i will add an arrow and to, and to open the emoji panel you have to press Control command space in mac and in windows you have to press the windows period key windows dot okay that way it will open the emoji panel right? and you have to search for this arrow you can find this thing here inside mac and the option is similar in the windows also or you can simply search like let me search here arrow okay so this is the arrow we have okay 
I will copy this thing again. I will type foundations here. Okay, I will create another page. I will add space first. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And I will type colors. Let me copy the space first. Copy. Paste. Typography. Effects. Grids. Okay. Then I will create another page and I will leave this thing empty. Like simply hit space and leave this page empty. Let me resize it and I will create another page. I will search for diamond. Okay, now I will, I will add this icon here. Okay, this is the component icon we have. I will name it compo. Next. Okay. And I will create it and I will simply paste the space like, like the five letter space and I will type like one button. Okay, I will create another one. I will create two fab and I'm adding the numbering so that it's very easy for anyone to understand. Like if you are telling your developer, like the button is on the page one, like the uh, input field is on page five. So it will be very easy to navigate. Okay, so like fab, then we can have uh, chips. Wait a minute, I forgot to add the numbering. Okay, then we can have input fields. And yeah, if you have multiple versions of a component, like say you will be having the password fields, OTP field, you can keep them on same page. And if you want to keep them on different page, what you should do is you need to add the decimal number in like 4.2. And this will be our password field. Okay, then we will have 4.3 OTP field. Okay, and you can keep them on single page. That's not a problem. But but if you want to keep them on different pages, you should use the same number. You can do the same thing with the button also like this is a button. This is also a button and this is also a category of button like chips is also a category of button. So you can name them like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So that will be very easy. Okay, and you have to add all other components and I have already created a file structure for you and I have already set up the basic thing like these are foundation. These are the colors. And I have set it up the both in light and dark theme and I have tokens here like if I show you if I just go inside variables. Okay. Okay. So these are the base colors and I have already explained all these things in previous videos. So you, you can go and watch that. So these are the base colors we have and then we have the UI colors or semantic colors. Okay. First of all, we have the surfaces like these are used for cards. We have like bottom sheet or any card we have on UI design or the screen background we have and these are the different states like card normal default card normal hover okay then we have the card elevated default card elevated hover then we have the sticky element and we have the fixed element this will be used for like the bottom nav bar we have or the top nav bar we have so this color will be used as the background of that element okay then we have the background in background it contains different colors like neutral or gray colors okay then we have the ascent danger warning success and yeah you will not understand all these things if you have not watched previous videos so i recommend you to go watch those videos first otherwise you are just wasting your time by watching this video if you don't know about tokens and all the basics of ui design okay because this is not a beginner's video this is for intermediate designer like you should know the basics of ui UX design theory and tool part okay and in this i have divided tokens in three parts like first of all we have the background like surface and background are in, are in same category then we have the content and then we have the stroke Okay, like this is the background content stroke and in the bucket I have extra colors. Let's say if you want a white color that will remain same in both light and dark theme. So you can add extra colors here like this is the gradient white. This is the gradient black. So you can add additional colors here like this is a pure black color and this is not invertible color. That means it will remain same in both light and dark theme. Okay, so this is the basis token system or color system. I have set it up. Similarly, I have the typography. I have already set up the typography. You can use this typography or you can build your own. I will leave the link for this file in the description. You can copy that file from here. Okay, so I have some basic typography system where like we have the 12 pixel 14 pixels 16 pixels 18 pixels we have okay like here we have all the different properties like font name typeface weight okay and you can modify this thing according to your requirement okay and then we have the effects and i have not added the effect effects is up to you how you want to create the drop shadow and even if you want to keep drop shadow or not because if you are creating a flat design then you don't need to add effects so i have not added that okay and i have also not added the icons you can just go to figma community and search for any icon library let's say we have the material design icons let's say material design icons okay so here we have the file you can just copy this file and copy all the icons and import them into this file or you can publish that file individually and then enable that file here and this is again the tool part i have already explained to you how to 
use figma libraries in the second video of this design course okay so go watch that otherwise you will not understand i'm telling you this thing again and again because it's important otherwise you will not understand anything okay and we have the components like we have the buttons fab radio button checkbox toggle button fab chips and tabs ribbons button and if you don't know about any of these component you can just google it it's not that much hard and i have covered so many components in my ui design course go watch that okay then we have the top nav side nav you can see that these three are of the same category like the bottom nav top nav side nav so i so i have added the number accordingly okay see whenever you are building a new design system you should keep one thing in mind you are not building the design system for your users you are building the design system for the developers and designers working on that project see your user don't care about the aesthetics and consistency in your design as long as they are able to do what they wanted to do in your application or website okay so keep the user aside for some times okay now let me show you what is the correct way of building a component inside figma like when you are building a design system like what is the correct way of building a component inside a design system okay so we normally create a component like this like this is a component we have like this is a nav bar and we have five different state like in first one the first tab is active then the second tab is active and the third tab is active and the fourth tab the fifth tab okay this is not the correct way this is not recommended like like this is not how you should build a component when you are building a design system or you're working on a very large scale project or even if you are doing a personal project this is not the correct approach to build a component inside figma because this is not how we build component in development okay in development what we do is we build an individual component like we do different levels like first of all we have nav items these are the different states we have like this is a default state and this is a selected state okay then we have the item group like i have copied this component i have created another component with the help of this thing okay then we have the fourth level in which we have defined the different states okay and then we are using that instance here okay and if i want to change the different state i can go here like I, if i want the first tab to be active i can do that i can change the second tab third tab okay now the benefit of using this type of component structure is let's say if you want to change the active state or look of the component so like initially if you use this type of co component what you need to do is you have to select every single one of them and you have to change the property manually let's say if i want a pill inside that what i need to do is i will change that thing manually and i have to do this thing for every single component we have okay so this thing will take a lot of time so this is not the correct way the, the correct way is to use this type of component yeah initially it might take some time but in a longer run this will help you a lot okay let's say if i want to change the look of the active state or the selected state of the component what i can do is i can just change this component let's say if i add an auto layout and change some property let's say okay now i have changed the property very easily and the changes have been reflected everywhere so this will save you a lot of time in a longer run and this will be very easy for developer because this is how we build component in development first we create a single component then we combine the component and we create a widget we call that thing widget in development so using this type of component structure will save you a lot of time in a longer run okay let's say if i want to remove one icon let's say i want to delete this create icon i can delete it and i can delete the instance from that and the component will be updated so this will save you a lot of time in a longer run okay so this is how you should build a component okay okay now coming back to the file structure like this is the miscellaneous component like here you can place the components which are not used in your ui design use you are using those things in just your design system like for documentation like if you are creating a component for annotating some things then you can place that component here and you can add an underscore before the name of that component and that way it will not publish that thing to your team library okay and that we have the archive page you can keep the archive designs here and, and you can add the file cover here and when you are designing the file cover make sure that it's distinguishable let's say if i go to atlassian design system okay like here they have the file cover i have copied that thing let's say this is the design system file let's say design system the file cover should be different like both of the file cover should be different like this is the design system and this is like say ui design so that any designer or developer can identify the file by just looking at the cover okay like if i go here like i have this file cover here like design tokens and foundation similarly i can have ui designs i can have other files like the graphics or icons we have okay like you can keep all these things separate in different files okay that way it will be very easy for any designer and developer to find the file and you can also add other elements to differentiate the file cover let's say for uh, design system you are using the purple color or the dark blue color and for the ui design file cover you are using a white color so that way the developer and designer will be able to differentiate that thing very easily okay so these were some things you should keep in mind while designing a design system and i will see you in next video till then bye